All right, I don't have the biggest calves in the world. I never have. I've never been proud of them, but I also own it. So I figured, well, why not totally own it and do a video that addresses whether chicken legs or smaller calves are a genetic thing or just kind of a situation whether you're training them properly or not. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. It's the internet's number one performance and nutrition channel with new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Also, head on over to highlead.com to check out the apparel that I'm always wearing in these videos. All right, so when it comes down to looking at the calves, we have to know exactly what makes them up. So let me just give you a quick calf 101. First off, we have the soleus muscle. The soleus muscle is the part that's underneath the more visible part of our calf. Okay, the soleus is an endurance muscle. It's the job of the soleus to allow us to walk around, allow us to run, allow us to do these things that we are really doing every single day, almost all day. Okay, then the gastrocnemius is the portion that you usually see. That's the part that kind of has that diamond shape to it. It's the part that everyone thinks is the bulk of the calf. Okay, that's the part that most people try to focus on when they're growing their calves or trying to grow their calves. So now that we know the general breakdown of the calves, let's talk about muscle fiber type. Because this is where we can start having a discussion about genetics and all that. A lot of people will say that the calves are purely genetic. Well, they are to some degree, but there are a lot of different factors that can exacerbate or, or change the effect of that in general. So let's break it down. The first one is slow and fast twitch muscle fibers. You see, slow twitch fibers are the endurance muscle fibers. They're the ones that allow us to have sort of that repeated use, like walking, like running. So the soleus is more so slow twitch, where the gastrocnemius is slightly better when it comes down to having a little bit more fast twitch, which means it's able to grow a little bit better. In fact, there was a study that was published in the European Journal of Physiology that did some cross-sectional analysis on the soleus and on the gastrocnemius. And they found that on average, the soleus was about 80% slow twitch, which again, makes sense. The soleus is used for walking and for just general activity. So it makes sense that it's designed to constantly be used. And they found that the gastrocnemius was a little bit different. The gastrocnemius was about 34% fast twitch, roughly 55 to 57% slow twitch. So still heavily erring on the side of slow twitch, but it did have some more fast twitch, which means you have more of a chance of being able to grow that visible gastrocnemius portion than the soleus portion. To give you a matter of context, when you're doing the seated calf raises where you're sitting down and kind of just lifting your calves like that, you're activating purely the soleus. You're barely hitting the gastrocnemius at all. When you're doing standing calf raises, you're hitting the gastrocnemius and the soleus. So case in point, really short, if you want to grow your calves, just don't even bother with the seated calf raise, but that's not the purpose of this video. Okay, the fact is, is that these are not genetic issues. Okay, sure, we can be born with slow twitch and fast twitch, and that plays a role, but it's more so environmental. Okay, it's the fact that we're constantly walking around. These muscles are just adapting to that style. They're adapting to being slow twitch. So we have to change how we actually trigger them, which ends up kind of coming into biomechanics. You see, a lot of people walk around, they don't just activate their calves the same way other people activate their calves. So I'll give you a simple example. Like when I'm walking, I grew up as a long distance runner. So when I was younger, before I gained a bunch of weight, I ran a lot. And that means that my soleus really developed into a heavy type one muscle fiber. So I wasn't really activating my gastrocnemius much anyway because I was so soleus dominant. So it makes sense that it's a little bit harder for me to build the calves up. Yeah, sure, I could give them the extra focus that they deserve. Okay, I'm definitely gonna eat my humble pie there. But the reality is that how you condition your calves plays a big role in how they grow. So then we have to look at what's called the muscle belly and tendon relationship. Okay, so a muscle belly is actually the size of the muscle itself. So how all the cells, all the sarcoplasm, everything envelops just into this giant muscle, right? So a longer muscle belly is literally like it sounds. If you look at your calf, it's a muscle belly that's gonna extend closer to the ankle. A shorter muscle belly is one that extends further from the ankle and it's kind of condensed up behind the knee. So you've all seen those people before, the people that have like those perfectly defined calves that are very isolated up almost behind the knee. That's an example of having a longer tendon and a smaller muscle belly. Although those calves look nicer, they are a little bit harder to grow. You see, believe it or not, it's actually easier to grow a calf that has a longer muscle belly and a shorter tendon. This simply has to do with the fact that the shorter tendon is already at its limit. It's already very tight, which means that you're able to get a tighter contraction on the calf 
calf and therefore grow it a little bit more. So what's interesting is that those that have the shorter calves that are closer up to the knee usually are a little bit better when it comes down to bouncing performance. Okay, so things like jumping rope, possibly sprinting, box jumps, things like that, simply because they're getting more recoil, rubber band effect out of the tendon. So it doesn't always mean that you're able to grow your calf better. It just means that you're able to get more bounding performance. So what we have to look at with ourselves is what kind of calves we truly have, and we have to train them accordingly. If you have a shorter muscle belly and a longer tendon, you need to be training with more plyometrics in order to actually condition that further. That way you're gonna stretch the tendon that's a little bit looser and you're gonna be able to activate that hypertrophy range through bounding movements. So box jumps, sprinting. So sometimes when you find the people that have just the perfect calves that are like smaller up behind the knee and they're big, it's usually because they're the perfect storm of having that muscle belly type, but they've already trained in a fashion that works for them. So sometimes you see football players, running backs, things like that that are always pushing off their calves and they just so happen to have high insertion where well, that means that they're gonna end up just having the perfect storm to build a big calf that's also normally harder to build. Does that make sense? So once you know what your calf looks like, it gives you a little bit more insight. If you have a little bit more of a standard calf with a shorter tendon, you're gonna benefit from just doing good old fashioned standing leg raises. So just ones where you're standing up and you're just going on your toes and you're flexing that way. Basically pointing your toe in essence, which is what the calf is supposed to help you do. Okay, now the perfect range to be training the gastrocnemius is also gonna depend on your muscle fiber type. So the recommendation there is you're gonna to wanna to mix up your training. You're gonna to wanna to go a little bit heavy, but you're also gonna to wanna to focus on the mid range too. So try to train yourself in like the six to eight repetition range with drop sets down to the 12 to 15 repetition range. That way you can make sure you're activating that hypertrophy range too. Okay, this leads me into the next component that's very, very important though. And this is the hormonal side of things. You see, we have less androgen receptors in our limbs, period. Okay, in our legs and in our arms. So when you're talking about the legs, for instance, the lower leg down in the calf has a very small amount of androgen receptors. Now an androgen receptor is something that allows you to process the male hormones. So in essence, testosterone, all those other androgens, things that allow you to actually grow a muscle and have male pattern characteristics. Okay, so if we have less androgen receptors, it means that we're less likely to grow muscle there. Now, where this becomes a problem is if you have low testosterone already because low testosterone is gonna exacerbate the negative effects of that. You see, if we already have a low amount of androgen receptors in our lower leg, and then we compound that with low testosterone, that's very, very, very little testosterone or very little androgen that's actually getting to that area. So a lot of times what you'll find is like people that are starting to get older and they have lower levels of testosterone, their calves end up being the first part of their body they start to notice atrophy in. And this is simply because you're having less androgen activity down there. So you might notice that you have a hard time building your calves if your testosterone levels are lower, more so than you'd have ability to build your chest. The fact is we have more androgen receptors in our upper torso than we do in our legs. So if you can understand this, it can give you a little bit of peace of mind as to why your calves might look the way that they look. But the simple math is, if your calf inserts high, then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do more plyometrics. If it inserts low, you're just gonna to wanna to train it in a more just consistent fashion with hypertrophy range reps. That's all there is to it. But the simple fact of the matter is, if you have more slow twitch than you have fast twitch, you're just gonna have a harder time building them. And that's just all there is to it. But it doesn't mean that you should give up and totally walk around with chicken legs. You can still build them up to a halfway decent size. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos or more exercise science type videos, put them down in the comment section below. See you in the next video.